Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and in this episode of CUDA Crash Course, we're going to be talking about device properties. Now, you know, in the past when we've talked about optimizing for a particular architecture, you know, we know what GPU we're using, so we can go ahead and optimize in any way that we see fit. However, this isn't always the case, especially if we're at, you know, some company or some lab that's designing some kind of, you know, for framework, right? If we're designing some kind of framework, we're designing it in such a way that we don't necessarily know uh, what device somebody you know has? Do they have you know the latest and greatest um, V100 GPU? Do they have something as old as Maxwell or Kepler, right? And this makes a big difference. And it's not just in terms of you know how many threads we can launch uh, or thread blocks we can have running on a GPU at a time, uh, or the number of SMs. Uh, it can have severe impacts into you know what is actually supported uh, in terms of functionality, right? So you know what's supported in terms of you know, unified virtual memory, right? Can we have concurrent access to data structures between uh, the CPU and the GPU, right? So these are the things that we have to, uh, you know, even from a functionality point of view, we need to know ahead of time. Uh, and so, uh, but this isn't always the case, right? So somebody doesn't always know exactly what they're going to be running on and we have to prepare for this. So in this way, we can get this information at runtime through this, uh, these device properties, right? And we're gonna show that with a quick example. We're not going to print out every possible device property, but we will look at uh, quite a few. All right, so let's go ahead and go to device query and open up um, this example, right? So this is just a normal C++ file. So if we want um, uh, you know, to have access to these things, we need to go ahead and include a header, which is this CUDA runtime.h, right? And so what we're going to do is the first thing is figure out how many devices we have. So a lot of time in larger frameworks, uh, things are parallelized across many devices, right? Um, well, I shouldn't say just in larger frameworks, but in some frameworks and in some applications, you can have you know uh, applications that are running on multiple devices at one time, right? So in this case, we need to know how many devices say we have, right? Uh, and this isn't just if we want to run one thing on multiple devices, we may want to run something on a particular device, right? So in this way, we can go ahead and get the device count using this uh, call to CUDA get device count, right? And this will give us you know an integer number. Uh, Right, so in this way, we'll, uh, in this case, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll just print out the device count, uh, and then we'll go ahead and iterate over all the devices. Now, there'll be devices will be numbered in order of uh, zero all the way up to one minus uh, device count. So we'll go ahead and put that in a for loop. And you know, if we want to set a particular device, we can go ahead and do that with CUDA set device. Then when we launch a kernel or something or do a mem copy, it will go to that particular device. Uh, another thing we can do though is we can get this struct of device properties, right? And these are all the things that are particular to that device that we're set at, right? And it's a struct as we can see from the, uh, you know, from this uh, document from NVIDIA, right? We see that it's got a number of different things in here. So it's got, you know, name, total global mem, and we'll print out a, some of these, right? So we'll go ahead and get the properties from the GPU just by calling CUDA get device properties, right? And we'll pass it in the special struct, right? This CUDA device prop. Uh, struct, right? And it'll fill that for a particular device I. Um, in this case, the I is just the, that's just what we're using um, for a loop. So we'll go ahead and print out device I is A, and it will go ahead and print out from that device property struct the name, right? And so uh, in this case, I've got a 1050 uh, uh, GTX 1050 Ti in my uh, little system at home, right? So it should print that out. Uh, we also need to take care of you know what driver and what's our runtime that we're actually working with, um, and uh, we also need to know you know what's actually supported on the actual architecture itself. So we'll, we can also get the uh, we can get the driver version. We we can also get the runtime version. So I'm working with CUDA uh, 9.1 on this machine, right? And so we can go ahead and get that here, and then we can also get the CUDA capability for the particular device, right? And that will be this uh, device prop major and device prop minor from this struct right here, right? And everything's explained down here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and link this below as to what each of these things is. Um, the next thing we can do is, you know, if we're using something like, you know, uh, you know, a earlier device that say doesn't support uh, unified virtual memory, uh, it doesn't support things like CUDA malloc managed. Uh, you know, we can't have things automatically get paged to the GPU, so we'd have to do something like a mem copy, right? And if we're doing something like a mem copy, we need to know how much can we actually put on the GPU at one time. So in you know in many cases, we'll need to get the total global mem, 
right? And this is also the case for something like, uh, you know, unified virtual memory uh, or unified memory and, you know, CUDA, uh, even in devices that do have support for unified memory because they may not, uh, the particular device may not support uh, memory over subscription, which means you can allocate more memory than is actually available on the device, right? Things will just get paged off and get uh, moved back on as needed. So we'll go ahead and print out that in gigabytes. We can also get, say, the number of SMs, the clock rate of the device, um, the L2 cache size. Um, so if we, you know, want to maybe guarantee that you know our working set's going to fit inside of our L2 cache, we can uh, we can do that here. Uh, we can also get, say, you know, a lot of times we're worried about, you know, what's the largest thing I can fit inside of shared memory, right? So how many, how much shared memory do I have uh, per block? Right, and this is like in uh, kilobytes, right? So a lot of times we'll do some scaling here, right? So to get to gigabytes, we just divide it by two to the 30. Um, to get uh, the clock rate in gigahertz, we'll just multiply by one times 10 to the negative six. Uh, the L2 cache size is on the order of megabytes, so we'll divide it by uh, two to the 20. Uh, and likewise, um, you know, the size of shared memory is going to be on the order of um, kilobytes, right? So we'll divide it by just one K, so two to the 10. Right, and there's so much, and there's you know much more that we can get over here, right? So here we've got the ones we've seen here, so clock rate, uh, but we can also get you know what dimensions are actually valid, right? So I can get the max grid size, max threads per block, um, the warp size, right? So warp size, you know, for every architecture from NVIDIA, I believe, um, it's been consistent at 32, uh, but this isn't something that's necessarily guaranteed, right? It's just something that's happened, uh, that's been a pattern, and we can also get you know, a number of other properties as well, right? So uh, can uh, map host memory, uh, what else do we have here? Um, does it support concurrent kernels? So, um, you know, this will return one if the device supports executing multiple kernels within the same context uh, simultaneously. Uh, yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of these things that we can use and have, you know, code that, you know, reacts to these different properties and it will launch, you know, different kernels in different circumstances. Or if you have something like a uh, templated kernel, right? So, you know, or, a, you know, templated functions that will, you know, launch a particular kernel, right? It can react to what device it's actually going to launch on um, and select a particular kernel that's more, you know, optimally, uh, or that's, you know, better optimized for a particular device. Right, so we'll go ahead and compile this with GCC or G++, right? Uh, now to compile this, right, so, you know, just as normal, right, so we'll do G++, um, query device, dash O, and we'll just do query device uh, as the name, right? So we get this problem, right? So this is undefined reference, right? And that's because we need to link against the CUDA runtime uh, because, you know, this is, we're, we haven't compiled it with NVCC. We could compile it with NVCC or G++, we wouldn't have to do that with NVCC. So if we do it with G++, we have to make sure to do the L CUDA RT or the CUDA runtime, right? And then when we go ahead and run this, we see that, let's zoom in a little bit, right? So we see that there's one GPU in the system, right? And the, it's running a G4, or it has a GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. The driver and runtime are both 9010, right? So I'm running CUDA 9.1. Uh, the CUDA capability is 6.1, so that's for the device itself, right? So this is going to be a Pascal GPU. Uh, the global memory is 3 gigabytes. The number of SMs is 6. Uh, the max clock rate is 1.392 gigahertz. We've got a 1 megabyte L2 cache. And the total shared memory per block is going to, in kilobytes is going to be 48. Uh, right, so you now this is just an example of, you know, some of the things that we can get out of these device properties, as well as a quick discussion on, you know, how we can use these. Right, so that's going to go ahead and do it for today, you know, and later, uh, uh, and later shows or later episodes of the series, we'll go ahead and look at some frameworks that make use of this, um, you know, you know, such as, you know, things like Cocos, right, that are more cross-platform. Uh, and we'll see how those work as well, right? Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. Feel free to check out any of this code at um, github.com slash coffee before arch. So this is all in the CUDA programming where we've got stuff on vector addition, matrix multiplication, the library, some reduction convolution, as well as some you know miscellaneous topics, right? And so feel free to also send me any you know questions or you know requests for 
further videos in any of the series that I do at my Twitter page at um, Accelerator Nick at Twitter. Um, and so feel free, again, to send me any you know, questions you may have. That's going to do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.